Dash cams are useful technology, but aside from maybe saving some money on your car insurance, there's nothing you can really get excited about when you're talking about dash cams because they don't really do anything useful or cool for you. But what if they did? The Jomis K7-1600P dash cam doesn't just sit and silently record your daily commute. Instead, it has features to make your daily drive nicer. It's also got a few features that aren't so interesting, but hey, it's a dash cam, not a video game console. Anyway, let's take a look at what it can actually do. Some dash cams come loaded with various accessories. That wasn't the case here. In the box, you'll find the dash cam itself, a USB cable for power, the power adapter, and a piece of electrostatic film used to attach the dash cam to your windshield. A lot of other dash cams we've looked at include tools for hiding the cables in your vehicle's interior. This doesn't, but I guess that part is optional. Still, it's nice to know that there are no tools installed. You'll need to get some of your own. As the name implies, the Jomis K7 records video at up to 1600p. Specifically, it uses a video resolution of 2560 by 1600 at up to 30 frames per second. Or, if you want, 1080p at 60 frames per second. To capture that video, the K7 features a Sony Starvis IMX415 sensor and an f1.6 6 glass lens meant to filter out glare. To make sure it captures everything, the K7 shoots at a 170 degree wide angle which can cover four lanes of traffic. Now I've already mentioned the K7 has features you won't find in other dash cams. Let's take a look at what those actually are. Two of the most interesting features aim to help you keep your attention on the road, or at least remind you that, hey, you know, you're driving, so you should probably pay attention. The camera will let you know via its built-in speaker when a traffic light changes from red to green, meaning you won't hold up traffic behind you. If instead you're stuck in traffic waiting for the car in front of you to move after the lights changed, the K7 will also let you know once they do start to move. These two features may not sound like much on paper, but if you drive home from work in heavy traffic every night, you'll appreciate having the assistance. The K7 also features a built-in GPS tracker, no external dongle necessary. Jomis also boasts that this is the only dash cam with a custom screensaver. I don't know why you'd want or need that, but hey, it's there if you do. Mounting the K7 is slightly different than other dash cams I've tested to date. Instead of simply peeling the protection from the adhesive on the back and mounting it to the windshield, there's an intermediate step. You get a small sheet of electrostatic film that you're meant to put on the windshield first. Then you attach the camera to this. Now this might seem unnecessary, and it kind of is, but it makes it easier to remove the dash cam later on without leaving behind any messy residue. Now this next part I found out the hard way, so make sure you don't do this. Once you mount the camera, it's pretty tough to get to the micro SD card, so before you mount it, make sure you insert the micro SD card you're going to use and plug in the power cable. Both of these are a lot harder to do once the camera's mounted, so if you plug in the cable and put in the card first, you'll save yourself a whole lot of time and maybe a few headaches. Once the dash cam is mounted to your windshield, all that's left is to plug it into the included power supply, which plugs into your vehicle's power outlet. As I mentioned before, after this, it's up to you to figure out how you're going to deal with any excess cabling. The first thing you'll notice after you plug in the camera and start your vehicle is the welcome message. This is nice. Immediately after this message, the camera will rudely display a QR code and start shouting at you to download an app to activate the camera. This is less nice. The app this QR code points to is the High Dash Cam app. Now, I've never used this app before, but it wasn't as bad as I initially feared. While this does use the cumbersome connect to the dash cam's built-in Wi-Fi approach, the app actually found this on its own and connected without any trouble. Now, this app isn't just how you activate the camera, it's how you do pretty much anything with it. Even if you just want to change the resolution, for example, you're going to need to connect the app to the camera and set everything up that way. There aren't really many options on the camera itself at all. While the dash cam has a touchscreen, there isn't actually a whole lot you can do with it. 
You can swipe from a preview of what's recording to a setup guide and a couple other options, but really that's it. There's not much in the way of actual useful features you can use with the touchscreen. Using the app, you can set the resolution and enable the various driving aids I mentioned earlier. You can also turn on emergency recording, which will automatically record when the camera notices sharp braking, sharp turning, or anything that could possibly be a collision. Once you've got the K7 set up and adjusted to your liking, you should largely be able to forget about it. When you start your car, it automatically turns on and starts recording. So as long as you never unplug it, you shouldn't have to think about it a whole lot after the initial setup. Like many dash cams, the K7 uses loop recording by default. This means that as your memory card fills up, it'll remove and overwrite old recordings with new ones. This means no worrying about having to manually remove files from your memory card as it fills up, which is nice. Even better, the camera has a built-in G sensor to detect possible accidents. When it notices these, it locks the file that's currently recording, so you don't have to worry about it overwriting any footage of a possible accident. The K7 also features parking monitoring. This means that even when the car is turned off, if the G-Sensor notices a bump, it will start recording so you don't miss any possible parking lot hit and run incidents. Some dash cams, especially older ones, didn't always make their footage the easiest to access. With the K7, you don't even have to pop out the micro SD card. One of the advantages of the app-based approach is that no matter whether you're running an Android phone or an iPhone, it's easy to take footage from the camera and add it to your phone's built-in photo gallery. The driving aids that Joe Meese advertises are also truly handy. Even if you're an unusually attentive driver, the prompts for light changes in the car ahead of you moving can make driving a subtly nicer experience. Dash cams are by their very nature utility cameras, so I've never really looked at dash cam footage and thought, wow, that looks amazing. That said, I will say that this produced some quality footage among the best I've seen from a dash cam. Part of this is because of the near 4K resolution. Another part of it comes from the optional wide dynamic range color. This is somewhat similar to HDR, but here it's meant to be more practical rather than flashy. For example, it could at least theoretically help police track down a hit and run by seeing the color of their car more accurately and helping them find it better. WDR also helps with night vision. Between the glare filtering from the six glass lens and the additional visibility provided by WDR, this is some of the better night vision we've seen in a dash cam. It's certainly a big step above any dash cam without either of these two features. If you're going to have a dash cam, you might as well have one that's useful for driving in addition to just insurance purposes. That said, there are two negatives here. The first is that you need the companion app to control any of the settings. The second is that this is only a front camera setup. Jomi sells other cameras with included rear cameras, but that isn't the case here. Now, neither of these are major deal breakers, just things you should keep in mind if you're looking at buying this. Assuming you've already got a dash cam, you may not want to upgrade just for the handy features here. That said, the K7's resolution, simplicity, and extra features do make it worth recommending. If you don't have a dash cam already, this is absolutely one worth considering. Now, if you prefer to read or you just want to compare specs, check out the written version of this review over at makeuseof.com. There, we have a coupon code for early buyers and we're giving one of these away. Even better, we're giving other stuff away all the time. Check that out at makeuseof.com slash giveaways. Now, if you're here for a video bonus code, I've got it. It's dash like the wind, all one word. Thank you to Joe Meese for providing the review unit. And as always, thank you for watching.